You know, none of these kids sat down and said, hey, I want to be a drug addict. Actually, what happened is, uh, like lots of other adolescents, they played what turned out for them to be a game of Russian roulette. There was something about their genes, something about their temperament that made them vulnerable so that when other kids got away, often scot-free, they got hooked. There was something different about their brains. We've got some alcohol in here, and our job now is to help you to consume this beverage in about a 10-minute period. Uh, like so, cocaine, uh, alcohol so is dangerously addictive. Minutes, if you can, while you drink By their alcohol, senior year in high school, so nine and a half million American teenagers will have tried it. So, you've been watching the sports? At the San Diego uh, Veterans Hospital, Mark Shuckett is trying to understand what makes some of these teenagers more vulnerable to alcohol than others. Oh, yeah, sure. That's super. That's great. For volunteers like 18-year-old Justin and 21-year-old Elika, Shuckett collapses one night of drinking into 10 minutes and then records the way their brains respond. Alcohol has a huge impact on brain waves, and it is indeed one of the ways that one can measure how the brain is changing in the presence of alcohol or other drugs. We gave them equivalent amounts of alcohol per kilogram. The result of that was that their blood alcohol levels were virtually identical. What the brain waves show us is that Elika is responding more to the alcohol than Justin. Her brain waves are being impacted by the alcohol significantly more than Justin's brain waves are being affected. So on a zero to 36 scale, how high do you feel? 36. What do you think about the slurredness of your speech? Are you, is your speech slurred? Mm, I don't think so, but it prob probably is. It's probably like a 20. Okay. And regarding how drunk or intoxicated you feel overall? 36. And she Almost. was having difficulty mm -hmm. concentrating, was having problems focusing on exactly what it was that we were talking about. And she had some pretty darn good insight that she was feeling pretty high. And on a 0 to 36 scale, how high, using that term generically, feeling high or intoxicated are you? Nothing. I don't feel anything really, like okay. maybe a one. And how about how clumsy you feel you might be? Nah, zero. And um, problems where you feel like you're floating? <laughs> zero. Got it. Justin had the same blood alcohol level, and when we asked him how he felt, he was basically saying, I don't feel much. It was almost close to zero, very low on the scale. And all you had to do was look at him, and you knew that he was feeling less. Zero. The same blood alcohol level, Having very different blood reactions. Blood the <laughs> Zero. The two people are starting out their drinking evenings with basically different equipment on board. Elika, after one or two drinks, is likely to look around and say, I'm getting pretty high, I'd better slow down. And a zero to 30 Justin, scale, how we would guess, when he goes to a party, zero. just having a couple of drinks, he probably looks around and says, well, what's the big deal? And he's probably more likely to go on to three, four, or five. Yeah, zero on that. Justin gets deal? drunk. It just takes Justin a lot more alcohol to get drunk than Elika. Even though Justin's brain responds more slowly to alcohol, he is more likely than Elika to become an alcoholic. Because he is less aware of alcohol's powerful effect, he may keep drinking when Elika might stop, exposing his brain to ever higher levels of alcohol and increasing the chance that he will become addicted. You know, I've talked to kids my age, my size, six beers and they're passed out. For me, six beers, I'm just starting to get warmed up. I can drink easily almost a case of beer to myself. You know, I have alcoholism in the family, you know, going back generations, and I'm sure that plays a major role, but it seemed like... One of the major reasons why alcohol dependence is running in families is because people inherit genes that impact on how their brains function. We found that a low response to alcohol is associated with a high risk for alcoholism regardless of your family history. But if you have both, a family history of alcoholism and a low response to alcohol, your risk is really quite large. 